What's going on guys, Josh here, and in this video I want to go through exactly when you should be and when you shouldn't be using this detailed targeting expansion option when running Facebook ads. So if you guys are new here to the channel, just wanted to welcome you in. My name is Josh and I'm a seven figure entrepreneur who loves all things e-commerce, productivity, and personal finance. Let's get straight into the video guys. What is detailed targeting expansion? Pretty much what it means is you're giving, when you take it on, right, you're giving Facebook the option to explore beyond the parameters that you've set in your ad set to go and find your purchase in very, very simple terms, right? So let's say for example, we're targeting dogs and you know, the, the audience has like 90 million in the United States. For example, you've exhausted that audience or you've ticked it on. Facebook is actually gonna go broader to the whole of you know the United States and find you potential customers that they think will actually go and buy your product. So there are times where you should be using it and times you should not be using it. And I'm gonna go through that in this video. The reason why I to make this was because there's a lot of people that ask me hey when you should you be using it and when shouldn't you be using it and it makes a lot of the difference guys um, it, it can make the difference between a good ad account you know setup versus a bad ad account setup so let's just jump straight into it we're in our ad set level in the Facebook ad section right at this point here, if you go down all the way down to the bottom, you're gonna have detailed targeting. And this is where it is, detailed targeting expansion. Now, whenever you create a new ad set, I will just let you know that it will always be automatically set up. The reason why this is so important is because, especially when you're testing, right? When you're testing your ad sets, you're testing your audiences, testing your creatives, you want to make sure that Facebook only shows your ad to those people. Otherwise, how can you be sure that, for example, dogs, is actually the audience that is profitable for you. Maybe Facebook is just finding it from, you know, other outside parameters, right? So let me show you guys. For example, when we're going into detail targeting, and if I, let's say I type in dogs, right? So that'll come up. It's got about, in the United States, about uh, 93,000 people that are interested in this, in dogs, right? Now, when we go ahead and click on the de detailed targeting expansion, you can see here, guys, that from that 90 to 93 or whatever it is, it's gone up to about 240 million. Let's tick that off. 93 million, tick it on, 240 million. So if you guys know anything about uh, Facebook advertising, you guys should understand that there are such things as broad targeting. Now, a lot of times uh, people ask me, hey, what's the difference between detailed targeting expansion if we're gonna target the whole United States anyway versus just broad open targeting? It doesn't seem like there's any difference, right? But there is a very clear difference to these two methods. So for example, broad open targeting without detailed targeting expansions, all of that Kind of stuff is just letting Facebook take all control. You're gonna let Facebook just be like, yep, I'm gonna, based on prior data, based on prior purchase data, all of these kinds of things, they're gonna go out and find you customers. But when you have, you know, an ad set that you're targeting specifically dogs, and then you've ticked on the detailed targeting expansion, what you're pretty much telling Facebook is like, hey, Facebook, I want you to find conversions or customers in this subsect of people, right? If you find that based on your algorithm, you know, your knowledge, all of your AI, if you find that some people people outside of that audience are actually going to convert as well, I'm okay for you to go external to the parameters that I've set. You're gonna be able to go outside of dogs, right? They'll be able to go out and find new purchases. Now this is extremely powerful when you use it in the right method. So now that you understand exactly what this detail targeting expansion is and why it differs to just broad open targeting, let's go ahead and talk about the situations where you don't want to be using this, uh, this option. The first situation is is when you're targeting and testing out new audiences. When you're testing out new audiences for your brand and you, you know, you're putting your best creatives and everything in there, you want to make sure that whoever you're targeting, for example, dogs, cats, you know, all of these detailed interests or demographics in Facebook, you want to make sure that you're only targeting dogs. Let me give you an example, right? On my screen here, um, let's say for example, we want to target uh, dogs and then we want to narrow it down, for example, by Amazon. And let's go to Amazon. Amazon.com like so. So we've got a narrowed down audience and it's gonna, Facebook is gonna spit out a number for us. So 64 million people in the United States are interested in dogs and also Amazon, right? So it's a narrowed audience. Now, let's say for example, we're testing this audience and saying, okay, maybe this is the audience that's going to give us a lot of sales profitably. Every single time we spend a dollar, we get like three, four, five dollars back out. When we hit this detailed targeting expansion, you're gonna see the audience size 
almost doubles, right? It's gonna go it broaden out to outside of the parameters that we've set. If we set this and it's automatically set, right? If we go ahead and test based off this, and you know, we've seen a good positive, you know, re return and all these kinds of things, we can't be 100% sure that it was just these audiences that actually brought us these sales, right? And then this is this causes so many problems, especially when you're trying to scale, when you're trying to, when you're spending about $20, you know, $50 per day on this audience, it's okay, right? But when we go ahead and we expand that out to like $500 to $1,000 of spend per day, we can't be sure that these audiences are the ones that are actually gonna bring us sales. It's gonna show when we have inconsistent results in our ad account and then we're just scratching our head and wondering why why the reason why is because when you were actually testing this audience Facebook was finding you customers outside of your parameters and therefore you thought that your creative actually matched your audience and there was a congruent you know match there therefore it gave you a positive result but it wasn't actually the case because you had this ticked on the second option is also when you're a similar uh, situation when you're testing creatives to your best audiences same situation guys because it's uh, Facebook is able to go outside externally to the parameters that you've set in your ad account you can't be a hundred percent sure that your ad actually is matching and is congruent to your audience and therefore driving a positive result like sales and, and profitability and then the third option is also when you are spending less right when you're spending um, a small amount of money, like $10, $20, like when you're doing your creative or audience testing per day, you don't want to have this ticked on just because it's just gonna skew the results. And Facebook honestly will probably waste your advertising budget. So I always, when I'm doing my testing, whether it be for creatives or audiences, I always, always have this ticked off. Now the last option and the last situation where I don't want this uh, ticked on is actually when I'm targeting lookalike audiences. Let's say for example, my purchase of 1% in the United States for the last 30 days are profitable. And I wanna scale this. Um, I, I've got 2.4 million people in this audience and I wanna start scaling. If I hit this detailed targeting expansion, right? It's going to go external again. Rather than that, there's a better option because the seed data is based off purchase, right? Purchases on my pixel. I can actually, using the business manager, just extend out that percentage. So rather than, you know, this group of people looking like 1% of my purchases, I can extend that out to two, three, four, five, all the way up to 10. Some ad accounts, depending on your spend, you can actually go even further to like 20%. And that just create, opens up more audiences for you. There's no need for you to open, uh, use this detailed targeting expansion for your lookalikes when you have a much more succinct and more efficient manner, a way of actually doing this. These are all the situations where you don't want to be using this detailed targeting expansions. So let's go through the examples of when you might want to actually start using this. When you want to start using this is after you've understood, okay, in my testing, right? People who are interested in dogs and people who are interested in amazon.com this is a great audience for me. Let's say for example, for this ad set, I'm spending like 500 to thousand dollars a day. Even though it's got 64 million people, eventually, right, with these ads, the audience will get exhausted. They, they'll have seen my ad enough times that they're just gonna glaze over it. They're not gonna really pay them any mind to it. They're just gonna ignore it, right? When it's at that kind of level, when you're at that kind of spend level, you want to hit this detailed targeting expansion. You know that these audiences are working and you're just like, hey, Facebook, you, you know, I've got enough purchases you know I trust you these are the people that I want you to target first right but if you can find people outside of these audiences then please do so as well when you're scaling every purchase matters so to return your profitability the other option where I would actually have this detailed targeting expansion ticked on is when I'm having like stacked interests stacked lookalike audience ad set in a CBO that is spending like one thousand two thousand dollars per day again I've tested these audiences I've tested these creative and yes, they've always provided a positive result and I'm just happy and confident enough to give Facebook more power, more control in these situations, right? It is a little bit risky, but at the end of the day, Facebook is playing the middleman between their users as well as us as advertisers. They want us to spend money and be profitable, but also want to provide a good example and a good user experience on the platform for you know Facebook users. 
experience. If we give them a little bit more control and give them a little bit more free you know, environments to play around with, more or less, they're going to find you the customers that you want, the purchases that you want. So I know that this video got a little bit technical, but I want to implore you of how important this is. If you guys have this ticked on, and generally speaking, when people create the ad sets for the first time, it's going to be ticked on. It's gonna really start to dilute your data. And then when you, as you get deeper and deeper into this Facebook ecosystem, you're gonna see that you're, you're not sure why there's inconsistencies in your ad account. You're not sure why you can't scale certain ad sets or certain audiences or certain creatives. This is why, because you don't have this automatic structure set in place. Because at the beginning, when you were doing your tests, you skewed the results by putting an outlier in there. You gave Facebook that control. You gave Facebook all of that spending power just to go out and find you purchases, right? Especially when your pixel doesn't have enough data, more or less, Facebook is just gonna go ahead and waste your hard-earned money on false leads. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention and I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I really hope that you guys come back and refer back to this video. Let me know how you thought about it in the comments below. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe and hit that notification bell just so you know when I'm here <laughs> launching another video and I hope you guys are doing well and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.